Hello and welcome to K21 Academy. In this video, R as your certified trainer will be discussing VM settings, testing tricks on VM, hassle-free storage management, and insight on when and how to scale your VMs. Also, don't miss the ending for a special free class. So, let's hear from our expert trainer. Uh, first of all, what we are planning to do is that we will be creating one simple virtual machine and uh, then we will be configuring a virtual machine scale set with the combination of a particular IS script. Uh, virtual machine extension works, what kind of like options probably we will be able to go for it and uh, uh, with the help of virtual machine extension, you will be able to understand that how that VMS is going to work out and your services like probably we can plan and manage back into the system uh, in that particular scenario. So we will take a look at it, that options and we will implement that particular scenario in place right so that's basically the objective what we are planning to take care of it over here so to begin with uh, first of all i will provision one virtual machine over here with uh, specific availability zones and all so here i can begin with virtual machine let's say click on create virtual machine and uh, under this particular uh, virtual machine creation activity let's say here i will say vm hyphen vmss hyphen rg uh, will create vm1 east us availability zone i'll keep it and say zone one and the security i'll keep it like standard and here i'll provision 2019 data center image so this is like a simple windows server what i'm planning to create uh, with it uh, the machine size i'll keep it like b2 ms so that it will be the lowest in the size and we can have a, a low configuration i mean b2s is also there i mean right now we are not implementing any high funda application or service so maybe i can go ahead with b2s as well and username and password so here i will say vm1 password i'll give it appropriately 12 character password now here when you are provisioning your virtual machines and all that right so we can provide some of the uh, inbound ports so right now i mean it's given that okay if you are since you are working with a specific uh, windows instance so you need to enable rdp port and on top of it if you wanted to plan and associate any other particular port number to be enabled then you can activate that as well as of now i will say no port required we will associate the separate NSG rules and all that which basically help you out to integrate this options and probably you will be able to validate that how this particular activity going to work out and probably if in case we need to plan anything as such in this then I think uh, we will be able to like play around with this and we can implement that activity on top of it right so that's basically the objective what we need to uh, target so here I will say uh, none and license right now we don't have as i said like microsoft will provide you byol now os disk point of view right now i wanted that instead of premium ssd i will go ahead with standard ssd so the cost will be a bit lesser comparatively and we can have a simple instance to be available with provisioning this particular uh, environment what we are like considering so we can have the instance and uh, uh, we will be able to plan and manage and configure the further environment what we are like looking at it so here we will be able to like uh, plan and manage and configure the next environment so that it will help you out with uh, along with this we can have networking so under this networking we can provide like let's say a vnet and all that so here i will give <clears throat> vnet name is vm vnet ip range let's say if i say 10.80.0.0 let's say instead of 16 i'll keep it like 20 let's say subnet name i'll give it subnet 0 and ip range uh, belongs to my main network what i have and i'll just provide 24 right and here we can <laughs> click on okay so this will basically give you the options where you can have your particular network created pm1 vnet your subnet uh, and nic card basically i'll keep it basic okay nic card security group what i'm looking at it basic and public inbound port should be none so this is something what we can have from the network point of view 
under the management section probably if you want to enable like some of the guest os updates and all that so maybe instead of automate maybe you can consider that okay i don't want automate update patch update and all i'll do it manual because it may be possible that when you update your particular instance then whatever the config or any setup you might have done then in that particular case you may have this limited options in that particular scenario so what we need to do is that we can plan or we can utilize this options uh, for patching and updating later stage now next is like my monitoring state so here basically we can say enable with custom storage account right now i wanted this uh, virtual machine scales uh, virtual machine when it is collecting diagnostic log for my services i wanted to uh, use them for my custom storage account and it will provide me a kind of option where whatever the data is getting generated it will uh, go from this and it will provide you a kind of option where you will be able to work with that uh, specific activity what we are like looking at it so here i can provide the option and consider that okay we can have this maybe you can say the data what we are collecting and all that it works effectively in this and it will available in terms of as and when required for your system point of view what we need it so we'll leave this default storage account uh, options let it be in advanced section basically here we are supposed to set up that uh, uh, you can say the extension but we will like do it in some time so right now we'll leave it and say let's go ahead and say review and create so i'll show you today creating virtual machine via ui same time we will create vm from the template so this vm got deployed but after deployed vm i wanted to see that can i redeploy it with arm template with the same settings and maybe the name change so we can do so and i'll show you that how we can implement that options so here this vm gets created so let this instance get created and we will provision vm another vm from this particular arm template what we have so let's wait for this instance to get going now once we have this particular vm got created okay so the next option is basically to get the option of uh, uh, you can say uh, connecting or accessing this particular further uh, services we wanted that okay once this instance is up and running we wanted to uh, like redeploy it okay so here you have a template on the left hand side section and under this particular template we can click on the deploy so the same vm we are going to repeat but with different parameter and different naming conventions and all so here i'll be selecting my existing resource group east us will be the location right now uh, the name what we need to consider is that the nick card what we have right so here uh, probably the instance name whatever we are probably having in place so what we need to do is that we need to change and modify a little bit with the instance name and that instance name basically help you out to update the value in that particular uh, case right so here we have the machine so network interface uh, the nick card name is given something unique right so here probably i can say resource group will remain same okay the only things what we wanted to do uh, in terms of name change that we can provide different name let's say uh, i'll consider v2 okay so this v2 i will use it in almost uh, uh, all these places vnet i'll leave it as this ip what we are supposed to create right so that's where we can have a particular public ip so uh, maybe i'll leave it as is or i can create new public ip static standard virtual machine name it has to be vm2 vm name one and this one everywhere i'll provide vm2 and rest of the configuration yeah here admin username i'll leave it vm2 and password okay manual update diagnostic storage account name is already taken so probably i can say again v2 so it will create a new name and availability zone here i'll keep it like 2 so whatever the instance we are like uh, planning to provision 
it will come from the same option or maybe you can say it will give you the option that okay this is your uh, existing particular instance and you will be able to go through with the implementation so we just wanted to plan and provision and manage this uh, particular uh, uh, environment okay so here probably we leave this uh, whole configuration as is right rest of them and say review and create so here i can click on create so this will provision another instance so let the second instance get created now network security group and other things i have kept it as is so this is like a kind of uh, option where we have second instance provision with the specific targeted availability zone and that will give you a kind of access or maybe you can say a kind of activity where you can have a simple mapping or maybe you can say simple operational activity in place and it will give you a kind of access towards that environment what we have so simply apply this so this is getting provision with uh, another instance right so here we have provision both the instance now what we are planning to do is that we can associate the extension to this particular instance so we have vm1 vm2 and all that so here to accommodate the extension uh, we have the storage account in place okay if you take a look at it there is a storage account available and under this particular storage account if i go to containers and uh, i wanted to associate my particular uh, you can say script to install IS right so here I will upload my script under this particular uh, storage location with private access so I'll click on create okay and under this particular script section I will upload the script file so let me see if I have az104 course material kind of activity so here is basically IS installation script available with the implementation so uh, this is like a kind of script what we're gonna use it for ps1 file so i will upload this particular file okay and this file has a powershell commandlet to install the is on your particular machine so i will upload this right so once this upload part is done we are supposed to map this particular instance or maybe this powershell script to our virtual machine so that it will help you out in terms of performing and provisioning your particular IS inside that. So to do that, I will come back to my virtual machine one. And here I can go to my, like you can say uh, extension. Here it is extensions and applications. Click on add. Okay. And here we have an option of uh, custom script extension. So right now we are like planning to run PowerShell script inside this. So we wanted that uh, this PS command uh, going to be executed or probably you can say it will uh, plan and manage and perform some of the operational activities. So I'll go ahead with custom script extension next. So this is something uh, like uh, code I have. I will share the reference material and everything so that you guys will get access to that so i will guide you how to get access and all that stuff so here first of all i need this particular storage account under that i have the script available and this is my powershell script which i can use it to attach in my particular instance so here i will say yeah review and create so what it does basically it will create the environment and it will start installing your IIS uh related activity on top of your instance okay so here we can provision this now the source code and all that which probably you might need to work with it so here if you can search for az104 github so this is the microsoft official uh, github repository from where we can get all the lab files and instructions and everything so here is the code section available okay under this we can click on this download zip file and the zip which i was using is something like that where uh, you can go to your i mean after download section and you extract that you will get this kind of all files 
under that labs and instructions and other things are available right so supporting file the script file and all they all are part of it and how to perform this lab activity there is a guideline given under the instructions where you can go to the labs and here is the manage virtual machine lab activity is there so this activity probably you can follow and it will help you out the implementation what i am going through with it you will be able to also do the same now this vm extension is going on for vm1 let me repeat the same steps for vm2 as well so my both instance will have extension supported and we can have a particular uh, is uh, powershell script will be applicable to both the virtual machines i mean we can do it via arm template also this one deployment but right now i'll just show you the ui based options where uh, we can have the script available under the container and it will give you a kind of access to be provided accordingly so here when we say review and create so it will allow you in terms of planning and provisioning your template all together and you can have access to that particular template in place so let's simply provision that so let this vm2 also get provision so this is basically a kind of simple activity where we can have both the instances are getting up to date or maybe up and running with the customized script what we have and under that powershell script it will refer to the uh, installation of is step now this one is basically you can say it's predefined where we have written the is installation uh, stuff and that powershell script basically install all those particular activity for you so it's more about like uh, when you are planning to work with any uh, extension right so this extension script basically help you out with uh, planning and operationally work with this particular environment and then accordingly it will provide you a kind of option to connect or maybe you can say work with this particular services the way it is expected so that's basically the objective what we are planning to take care of it and uh, uh, both the instance like once you have this particular options available so this vm basically uh, give you the like uh, option now let's say how to test and validate okay so to test and validate i can go to my virtual machine and uh, i'll tell you like the use case over here why we are doing it everything from portal so uh, i was talking about that restaurant chain migration and all right uh, similar to that there are couple of uh, customers over there who all are looking for some migration activity now one of the customer from the pharma company now of course i mean since it's a pharmaceutical so they don't want us to uh, see what kind of like data they have in their instance what kind of like infrastructure they do have and all that stuff so they were expecting uh, like uh, okay i mean we can simply have our instance created or maybe you can say the environment what we have so you guys are not supposed to see what's running inside the server you can only have access to the portal you can only like connect with that particular instance and you should not basically log in or access that particular instance and uh, see what's going on inside that particular instance accordingly so that is what basically the instruction given to us from the data perspective so uh, we are supposed to perform all the operations via this user interface only and that user interface basically we have to make sure that okay i mean we will not have credentials available for vm access and all that right so from security point of view you may get this particular requirement from customers as well so we have to test and validate that okay is is working fine or not so there is a option available under this operations where you can click on run command okay so this run command basically give you to run some set of different set of like commands on top of the instance so uh, so one of them is like basically run powershell script so one option we did it uh, like uh, is installation as in uh, setting up as a server role where, which we did it by extension script and this is something after installation 
what type of activity we wanted to do in that case we are planning to check that okay invoke uh, uh, web request right so this is like a powershell command which basically help you out in terms of testing so here we have invoke web request with uh, i mean you will get the code hint as well hyphen uri so i just wanted to provide that okay check with http colon slash slash 10.80.0.4 that's the ip of my particular virtual machine and here i will say uh, use basic parsing so what i'm trying to do is that usually what is this process after installing iis inside the virtual machine we rdp inside the vm and we test and validate that whatever local host installation we did it we run local host and then we test and check that okay things are fine or not right so something similar to that we are trying to do we are trying to invoke that iis which we have installed and set up do we get successful response from that particular command or not so it will refer to your private ip address of your virtual machine uh, with the kind of like local host uh, treatment you get it and it will try to access the hosted iis uh, service up and running inside that and it will respond back that okay uh, whether it's successful or uh, unsuccessful whatever it is and we will be able to get result in our particular output panel so this is the way usually we used to set up and configure something on top of that instance if we get instruction that hey you are not supposed to rdp inside the vm and all that and you are supposed to do test and validate things outside of the vm so we used to do this that run the powershell script and execute that okay i mean if any let's say you are supposed to configure active directory domain controller on that vm sometimes what is happening when uh, enterprise migrate their on premise server to cloud so they wanted uh, the directory roles uh, to be available on that vm right exist on that vm like uh, uh, user groups printing uh, printer fax machine or those kind of user level roles they create so they wanted that those roles to be exist in the server because they are part of the machine so whenever somebody try to connect and access or they try to do some activity they will get option or they will get access throughout that process so for that purpose maybe you might have to run those particular script you might have to initiate some particular activity once the machine gets created so during that process we can have this particular run command script option available and with the help of it you will be able to provision and manage or operationally configure that particular process uh, altogether so here we are having such options in place and if you see over here you will get the uh, the response as in 200 okay so it will confirm or validate that whatever the operational activity you have done on this machine it's work successfully and it responds back with the output that okay it's is install text html file i mean response get it and then you have the servers and all that stuff will be available as in metadata information so this is like a kind of approach where uh, when you are working with your particular virtual machines and all and if you are supposed to manage and organize any infrastructure outside of or maybe without logging into the instance then or rdp into the instance then this is basically a way where you can maintain security also and at the same time you are supposed to have access to those particular resources from the uh, portal ui and you will be able to work with that or implement those activity all together right so that way at least we can have those scripts to be up and running on top of it now we do have this remaining activities like backup disaster recovery and all we will talk separately for that uh, I'll, i'll perform that activity and show you that how backup works how dr planning you can implement we can test and validate and all that stuff i will show you but right now like we can keep it as is so that it will give you a particular option or maybe you can say a kind of like uh, access so that uh, you will be able to plug and play and manage your particular activity all together so right now this particular approach or maybe you can say action 
will provide you a simple virtual machine related activity. Now, what about virtual machine scale set? If you are planning to go ahead with uh, a virtual machine scale set or scalability of your instance and all of that, maybe you will be able to do so. You will be able to configure some of the approach and then probably you can simplify that uh, particular activity. Okay. Now, let's say that is one thing. Second thing is like if I'm planning to create and associate my disk to the instance. So how can I work on that particular area? So if I go to my virtual machine one scalability point of view. So right now I'm talking about vertical scaling horizontal scaling. We will take a look at it in virtual machine scale set option. So here we do have disk right and let's imagine this is my OS disk which attached to my VM. And I am expecting that okay in real time scenario, my customer asked me that hey, we want persistent disk storage attached to my VM so that whatever application data or logs or database data, whatever we are writing, we wanted to store somewhere in our persistent storage because virtual machine C drive is your OS disk and D drive is the temporary disk. So if we write anything on that D drive, then it will get eliminate all the data or erase the data when we restart our server. So what we want is that we want persistent storage. So in that scenario, you will be able to create and at attach a disk, right? So here I can provide a particular disk name. So maybe you can say data disk. Let's say zero. Uh, I wanted to go ahead with uh, standard SSD right now just for cost saving scenario. Okay, and size you can provide like uh, whether you wanted one TB or like what is the specific size you wanted accordingly you can uh, provide it right so you can define the size you can configure that so this is one maybe i can say okay data disk one and uh, i'll keep it uh, standard ssd and i'm assuming that in my application i need this particular data disk to be associated with my virtual machine so i'll keep it this particular configuration and say apply so right now what we are doing is that we are provisioning the disk storage persistent disk storage but it will not be accessible inside the vm unless and until you attach this particular disk drive to your instance right now it got created virtually i mean both the disk uh, service get provision for you but Till the time you will not attach that particular disk as a drive like a b c d e f whatever the drive later you are not associating with it then it will no longer be accessible. So you have to make sure that you attach that disk and it will get uh, associated with your particular option. Now in this case again we will go back to our run command right. So basically the run command give you a kind of option where you will be able to attach this particular uh, disk under this machine and uh, uh, this machine can have a common disk like I'm creating pool of disk right right now we have provision two disks. maybe both the disk size like different but I wanted like okay they work as a collaborative or one drive or common drive attached to that machine and I can see them as a single drive if you want to separate it you can but I just wanted to create a pool kind of activity and then attach it to my particular instance. Now to do so if you are going through with the steps and if you refer to this lab number eight. So under that there are somewhere. Let me see where it is. Yeah, here it is one of the PowerShell command given. So I'll explain what is this PowerShell command all about. So you will get the PowerShell command which depicts that we are creating new storage pool pool name is like storage pool one storage sub su subsystem friendly name is like window storage and physical disk whatever we have right that disk which we provision zero and one both the disk we are combining and creating one storage pool this will define it as an virtual disk with the storage pool friendly name uh, the virtual disk one uh, size like whatever like resiliency point of view we are trying to provide and all that stuff initial disk virtual disk and we are collating this particular details okay and once you have this particular details in place we are creating one partition uh, disk number we are giving maximum size and driver later is z 
so i will run this particular command so what it does whatever the disk we have uh, just now created both the uh, data disk what we have provisioned right so these disk basically uh, get referred it will create that particular storage pool and it will get attached to my virtual machine and then we can have access to that particular uh, z drive to be available in our particular storage machines what we are like looking at it so this is basically a kind of uh, maybe you can say approach or kind of like activity so if you see over here this number four drive letter is z and rest of the parameters will get appended uh, in that particular scenario whether you wanted read only or like, different parameters are there so maybe you can provide those parameters and if you see that operational status after attaching it is online and now it is available or accessible into your system so if i wanted to see them up and running uh, of course i need to rdp to the machine and post that uh, you will be able to see that but as of now rdp not required i mean uh, if i'm following my customers instructions that you are not supposed to connect and access that detail then i'll i'm fine i'll leave it as is and i will not change and modify anything in this particular environment so i'll leave it as is so this way at least we can have disk attachment to be available and configure this particular option so this is like a storage or disk scaling you also have a size option available okay so the size option basically changing the capacity of your machine and increasing the capacity of attaching more number of disk if you wanted for that particular system we have provision b2s right and there is like a maximum number of data disk you can attach it for now if i wanted like more capacity and more production ready instance then probably you can change the service tier or pricing tier of your machine and then you will get additional settings and configurations associated with that right so of course you need to remember higher the size more the costlier instance so unless and until you don't require don't get into this otherwise like it will increase your billing and all that stuff so if it is real time production requirement and then you are supposed to provide this value then only you go ahead with this and change and modify this particular parameter value what we are like looking at it so right now we will leave this as is we wanted that this particular instance will be available as is and no change in the scalability point of view now i am not repeating on vm2 i don't want to increase the cost of my subscription but yeah this is the way probably you can have more number of disks to be attached now this can be automated i mean disk provisioning i am talking about automated with your arm template as well maybe you can attach the disk and you can create it and it will get associated with your instance and it will provide you additional access on top of it so that is one thing now second thing is like uh, when we are planning to work with our i mean after uh, attaching all that stuff here we are going to look into like this is individual vm so vertical scaling we saw now i am looking for horizontal scaling and for horizontal scaling what we need to do uh, basically we need that like we can scale horizontally now individual machine cannot have horizontal scalable options uh, let's say for example if uh, earlier before this virtual machine scale set scenario i am talking about in year 2014 and 15 so when i was working with the older portal version of this so it was giving me the option that you have the old portal but it doesn't have a vm scale set option it was like only individual machine and what we used to do we used to pre provision machines because infrastructure as a service like do not have scope to dynamically scale so we used to pre provision like let's say five server we know that okay if uh, uh, if like more number of traffic goes uh, like request comes in or traffic goes high then maybe two machine may not be sufficient we have to provision more number of instance and then it will take care of that activity so we usually pre provision that instance before virtual machine scale set and we shut down those machines and we keep only two machine up and running and we constantly monitor the cpu usage the percentage of cpu usage property and then 
if the CPU usage goes beyond like 60% or 70%, then we are supposed to provision the another VM via the script what we have written with PowerShell or something. We start the machine and all that script is written. Now that is like manual process. So imagine that those five servers are not required, but still you are paying for the storage cost because you have pre-provisioned it. So what I'm expecting that we want some solution where we can have dynamic scaling but it has to be applied with infrastructure as a service and platform as a service that is built in feature. But what about infrastructure as a service? So in that case, what Microsoft has introduced virtual machine scale set. Okay, so here uh, virtual machine scale set. It's a kind of infrastructure as a service, but it will also offer you a kind of dynamic scaling with your environment and you will be able to plan and manage and work with that particular instance all together. So it will provide you a kind of approach or maybe you can say uh, provide you a kind of operational activity where you can scale your instance and then you will be able to work with that particular operational activity back into the system. So here now before starting with this right there are two parameters we need to check because virtual machine scale set require constant monitoring that okay your percentage of CPU or bandwidth or whatever like parameter we wanted to monitor then we need to consider that when the scalability requires we need to monitor those particular parameter constantly and then we can define the auto scaling rule in our particular system. So there is a way to check if I go to my subscription okay inside my subscription and search for resource provider and <clears throat> under this particular resource provider we have a option called insights okay so that is microsoft insights so this is something we require for monitoring now if you see this resource is not registered with my subscription so to activate that i will click somewhere in this gray box and click on register so this resource will be available with my subscription and similar to that we need alerts management that is also not registered i will register this so these are like resource provider and this particular resource provider attribute or property will monitor the activity and it will provide you kind of notification provision towards the system what we are like looking at it so we wanted to see that okay i mean if i am planning to configure and manage my a service altogether then it will help you out or maybe you can say uh, provide you a kind of option and it will give you some sort of output that yeah i mean things which you are uh, going ahead with it then you will be able to plan and manage and work with that particular options uh, uh, in place so that's basically the activity we are planning to go for it and it will provide you a kind of uh, maybe scenario or probably you can say kind of activity where you will be able to plan and manage and configure your resources the way it is expected right so let's provision this so this two particular elements we have to register first and what we are expecting that uh, with this particular service we just wanted the configuration to be available so this registration is basically required along with your subscription. I have something special to share. We have a free class and the best part is it's available for everyone. This class goes in depth into topics we touched on today, offering you detailed insights, comprehensive explanation and all you have to do is just click the link in the description below and you will be redirected to this page or if you are just starting out just type k21academy.com slash azure02 now all the information inside the video that we will be covering is listed here and for the class all you have to do is just click the event date into a name into a email id into a phone number and click on register now then you will be redirected to this page also, you can add this to your Google Calendar and your Apple Calendar. And I promise this is something that you don't want to miss. So go ahead, click on the link and step into a world where learning knows no boundaries.